hospitals would call it high blood pressure is a major public health concern. With a rise in population and unhealthy diets, hypertension is predicted to rise. Hypertension is also closely related to cardiovascular diseases, which may infect our lungs, organs, and all other parts of our human body. So understanding that that is a concern, today we are going to have our medical expert, Dr. Akasha, to further explain to us what is hypertension and what is the difference or correlation between that and high blood pressure. When you take the word hypertension, it basically means tension is tension. Right. When some other tension is exerted on your body, hyper means over, right. over tension, right? So in relation to high blood pressure, what it means by high blood pressure is there's always a pressure in the body throughout the artery system, okay? And when we measure our blood pressure, the blood is exerting on the artery when the heart pumps out the blood and when it's relaxing. So when you take a blood pressure, there's uh, two readings, uh, an above reading which we call the systolic and a below reading which we call diastolic. The systolic reading is basically the pressure, the blood is pushing on your artery. The above pressure is the one is the pressure that is exerting on the blood vessel. The diastolic pressure is when the vessel, the, your artery, is basically relax after a heart pumps it out. So you have two readings above and below. A normal reading would usually be below be below 130 for the above, below 80 for the below. So all these small vessels can pop, right? Exactly. So imagine if these small vessels are in your brain or in your organs like your kidneys or your lungs, it can pop. You know, so that part of the cells that is supplied with our blood vessel will just die. So what causes hypertension? Most likely through your dietary lifestyle. I mean, your lifestyle uh, behaviors, with your diets, your body activity, like whether you're sedentary or you're exercising. <laughs> can cause high blood pressure or if you have a tumor in your neck that can cause high blood pressure if you have a thyroid illness like hyperthyroidism or hyperparathyroidism that can cause high blood pressure if you have uh, problems in your kidneys the normal blood flow to your kidneys so that would, they can cause high blood pressure as well so yeah so what's the worst case scenario of somebody that is having hypertension so basically hypertension we call it a silent killer most people who has hypertension don't even know they have hypertension if they don't have a pressure machine at home, if you look correct, the BP machine at home to monitor themselves, most people who feel fine don't even, you know, won't even bother wrapping something around their arms and just checking their blood pressure. Someone with uh, hypertension can just go on with their daily life without anything happening to them or without them feeling anything. So you said hypertension is a silent killer. Right. Which means, are there even signs to tell us that some, there's something wrong with our body? Right, so most people with hypertension won't feel anything wouldn't get any symptoms their whole life they can just go on throughout their whole life living as normally as they would there's no, no, less, symptoms. no symptoms but some people with a high enough blood pressure usually between 160 or above 180 systolic and with a above 100 diastolic they start to get uh, symptomatic basically so what happens is uh, they start getting headaches uh, imagine uh, all these capillaries in your brain that's yeah I mean it's getting a lot of the gushing through all these small capillaries so you start to get a headache you start to get giddy you know, the blood vessels in your eyes so you start to get blurring of vision mm-hmm. pressure in your lungs so you start getting difficulty breathing these are extreme cases of hypertension extreme cases. and now the symptoms are showing correct is it too late at this point? no it's not too late uh, there are a lot of different categories of extremes of hypertension the first one would be what we call an urgency it's usually a high enough blood pressure causing all these symptoms but without all this target organ damage I mean your kidneys are still fine your lungs are still fine you don't get a stroke you still don't get all this blurring of vision so that without one if they come to the hospital with just those symptoms without the organ damage we can still manage it accordingly I mean we will give the proper medications to bring the blood pressure down so another type of emergency we call hypertensive emergency is a high enough blood pressure causing all the symptoms with organ damage say uh, a blood capillary in your brain uh, burst you can get a stroke the pressure in the capillaries in the lungs are high enough you can push water out of your blood into your lungs causing all this fluid build up in your lung and it just causes you to have difficulty breathing so there are a lot of different uh, types of emergencies that can uh, arise from high blood pressure what are the treatments
treatments for it and is there a cure? Yeah. Are, are these signs reversible? Right, so like I said, there are two types of hypertension. One is primary, one is secondary. Secondary hypertension is usually hypertension caused by something else, something else like a tumor, thyroid illness or anything. So for those types of hypertension, if uh, thankfully if you remove the underlying condition, if you treat the underlying condition, your blood pressure will usually normalize. If you give medications to treat hypertension, you, you put yourself in a state of new uh, thyroid, we call it normal, normal thyroid levels, your blood pressure will usually just improve along with that, not needing any additional uh, blood pressure medications. So that's for the secondary hypertension. For this, uh, the first primary hypertension, that is the hypertension caused by your lifestyle uh, habits. One of the questions that the audience must be having right now is that they're thinking, if I want to still enjoy all my cravings every now and then, is it still safe to do that and then offset that by an exercise and then somehow find this little balance in between? Is that still a good method or should we just cut off every unhealthy diet out there? Should cut off uh, every unhealthy diet there is. Is that realistic for most humans to do? It's not realistic, it's not ideal, but, but that's what we should that, that's what That's what we should, yeah, exactly. From my point of view, it's either, it's, 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 it's a cut off one between whether you want to lead a healthier lifestyle. There is a thing called balanced diet. Yeah. You know, the food pyramid we learn in school and everything, yeah. uh, that, I, I, didn't, I didn't see any fast food or anything inside there. So, if you want to be balanced and, you know, be balanced properly. Doctor, I like your hardline take on the prevention of uh, hypertension. The last thing that I want you to give us is to address the audience and give them one tangible tip that they can do at home to make sure they don't go down the path of getting hypertension. Okay. The first thing first, uh, get a blood pressure machine. Check probably once a week, twice a week. It's just a, a machine at home you put around your arm. It does nothing to you. It causes no, no pain. And then probably aim for a healthy lifestyle. You want to... What's a healthy BP level? A healthy BP level somewhere below, below 130 above, 80 below. So that's 100, 130 systolic, 80 diastolic. That's always two reading. I hope you're taking notes or taking a screenshot on the screen. Right. Yeah, out there, once again, thanks for uh, coming by and sharing with us the information that we need to know about hypertension and all its worst case scenarios. And that is a silent killer until it's too late. Out there. Thank you for having me. My pleasure. This is iMedic.